So happy to be joined now by Tyler Lockett of the Seahawks. And Tyler, I wanted to have you on for a couple of reasons this week. One is because I, I, I used to be one of the voters for the Walter Payton Man of the Year, and I realize how important it is. And it's very rare that a guy is the nominee of his team a couple of times, which obviously now you have been. So tell me why this award is meaningful to players. I think it's meaningful to players when you talk about the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, just because in the NFL, they teach you about how this is a business. And, you know, so I went to business school and they talk about sole proprietorship and all that type of stuff. But it's really just about you being able to look out for yourself. And so sometimes like football isn't the same anymore when you come from high school and college to the league because everybody wants to be able to eat. And if other people are being successful, it's almost like they're taking food away from your family's table, right? Like that's what a lot of people would talk about. That's what it was like when I came here. And so it's all about individual performance. It's all about being able to do what you can do to be able to make as much money as you can on and off the field. But when you talk about being able to be nominated for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award, it puts things into a different perspective and it, it, and it balances out the football that comes with sometimes indiv individuality where you start talking about being able to have a chance to make a difference in people's lives. You start realizing the money is just about having a head start in life and that you have a chance to be able to help people along the way. You can be able to make a difference, whether it's with money, whether it's with time, whether it's with listening, whether it's with giving words of encouragement and wisdom, you start realizing that the bigger picture of why you're in this position isn't about you. It's about what you can be able to do to be able to help others. And so that, that's what I mean by being able to be nominated for this award. It takes away all that selfishness that sometimes comes with football. It doesn't mean everybody's selfish, but that's just kind of the stuff that comes with the NFL. It's like, I'm a receiver, right? Well, a receiver can't be able to get stats without all the other people on his team. But when people talk about how great receivers that some people are, it's because they get so many opportunities and so many chances. And so as a receiver, everybody wants the ball. You know what I mean? And so when you get nominated for this award, it's like you have a chance to be able to sit back and realize that anybody would wish to be in your position. Like Gino had talked about it a little bit earlier. And so that's why I just think for me, it's very important because it makes me realize that like this is way bigger than football and you have a chance to make a difference, whether you think it's small or whether you think it's big, it could be gigantic and enormous to another person's life. Let's, I just want to mention a couple of things that you've done that really kind of stand out to me. One is that your foundation called the Light It Up Foundation uh, donated more than $32,000 in clothing, shoes, food um, to the Tulsa Day Center for the homeless last year. You also have hosted 12 um, students from the Tulsa public school system um, for a job shadow program in Seattle. Um, you've started a college scholarship program. Uh, you gave out $35,000 to seven students uh, for this academic or for the 21-22 academic year. And the other thing you did more recently is you combined with Bobby Wagner to basically pay off the debt for all of the public school students in the district where uh, the Seahawks play or where their practice facility is in Renton. Uh, a lot of kids had some outstanding debts uh, because they were having trouble paying for their own lunch. So you've done things like that. And and I, I, I'm, I'm curious, I know that you have talked very laudably uh, about Bobby Wagner, that he was uh, somebody who you looked up to because of his philanthropy, his giving. What'd you learn from Bobby Wagner? Uh, I think the biggest thing that I just learned from Bobby Wagner was just watching him learn how to be a pro. Uh, you know, the way he went about his business, the way that he responded through a lot of adversity and through tribulations and trying times. When you sit here and ask, you know, Bobby a question, 
uh, you know, he's able to give you a thoughtful answer, like not just a quick response where you're just kind of like, oh, okay, cool, and go about your way. Like he's able to kind of sit down with you and talk with you. And he's able, he's also able to listen to you if you're ever going through certain stuff, but just being able to watch how he goes about his business, watch how he's a pro, he, he became his own agent. You know what I mean? So yeah. he's, he's reaching new heights every single day. And so, you know, when I say I look up to him, it's just, I, I look up to the way that he moves, the way that he makes decisions, the way that he looks out for himself. He looks out for other people. You know, there, there's similarities that I see, you know, within myself when I look at Bobby and being able to see him as a captain, being able to see how he helped lead a team, how he had to make um, tough decisions, how he had to be able to have those tough conversations with people. Like it wasn't just about the team, but it was also stuff about like businesses outside, like learning about um, learning about stocks, you know, learning about like investments, like different opportunities like that. You know, I learned a lot with Bobby and like I said, man, the biggest thing that you start to see when you look at a lot of guys who came in before you, um, they care about being able to make a difference. And it doesn't matter if people know what they're doing or if people don't know, as long as the people who who are being able to see a difference in their life because of what people have done, like that's all that really matters to the people that's doing the giving. You had a great line recently about giving. You said... I like to give back. I just don't like people to know that I'm giving back. You know, you like to do it privately without uh, tooting your own horn. That kind of reminds me of the way Kurt Warner used to do it. After his career ended, we found out all these incredible things that Kurt Warner had done. And I remember I asked him about it once and he goes, you know, really, I didn't do it for people to say, hey, look at me. And I know this is probably a little bit awkward for you to talk about yourself in this way, but I also think it's important for people to know that football players, an awful lot of football players do an awful lot of good things off the field. Yeah, I think there's a balance, you know, in between because the hard part is, you know, like even being nominated for this award, you're talking about some of the stuff that you did or like how when I was up there at the podium, I was talking about, you know, what I had the opportunity to be able to do with Bobby. And it just kind of makes you feel like you're telling everybody this stuff to get a pat on your back. And so that's why I said it just it feels kind of weird when you're talking about yeah. some of the stuff that you do, because like you said, it's not like you do it for a hand clap or it's not like you do it for an award. You do it because that's something that you really believe in. And so that's why it's, it's just kind of hard, like you said, at the end of the day. But I think there is a balance because people do need to be able to grow up seeing what it's like for athletes to be able to give back, especially in our position, because most people think all we do is camps and they don't understand that we, we give a lot of money back. We give a lot of time back. We give a lot of like commitment back. We do as much as we possibly can to where it doesn't drive us crazy or, you know, to where we lose everything that we've been blessed to have, but we do as much as we can just to be able to make a difference and, like I said, as long as the kids know, as long as the people know, as long as like people within the communities that that um, are a part of the giving that we're doing, as long as they know, then, you know, that's ultimately all that really matters. I've got two quick football questions for you. The first is, you know, I don't know what's going to happen after 18 weeks, after 17 games this season. But I find it pretty amazing from the outside, anyway, looking in, that here you are, you've got a month left in your regular season, in your football season, and here you are fighting uh, tooth and nail for the division championship in a year where, quite honestly, I and most people in my business kind of gave you guys up for dead. You know, we thought you would be the worst team in your division. Tell me why you think this team has gelled to the point that it has this year. Well, I think that people don't really understand what it's like to be able to build a team. Otherwise, they would be the general manager, you know, what I'm saying? <laughs> or, or the owner or, or the head coach or whatever. But I mean, you know, the biggest thing is 
every year everything looks different and there's so many tremendous players there's so many um, different things that coaches look for in aspects of the game that they think or believe is going to be able to help us out um, you know the coaches did a great job just with being able to draft players to be able to come in immediately to be able to help us out but the biggest thing is I think like you know as we as we had a new team and our team is really young when you get a lot of young players, you really want them to be able to buy in. And when players are able to buy in, especially the young players that come in, like you're able to kind of walk them through the scheme. You're able to kind of help them understand, like this is what we do on defense. This is how we go about it on offense. And so now because they're young, it's like, okay, well, this is a standard. You know, yeah. so this is what it is that I have to do. This is how I have to compete. This is how I have to prepare. And so um, obviously they do it in their own ways, but then when you go out there, it's like football, you know, we're out there playing as a team. You know, we're out there being able to trust one another that this person is gonna do their assignment, that I don't have to do too much or too little. I just have to be able to go out there and do my part. And that's when Pete always talks about being able to be your best self, being able to find your best self and not put too much on you or do too much. And so I think that, you know, we just have a really unique team that um, has a whole bunch of talent. And it was just about being able to keep that talent into a place to where we can be able to show it and it looks good within the scheme of our team rather than us just out there playing as individuals. You know, the other thing that I wanted to ask you about is just the simple fact that when you walked into the Seahawks, there was this great rivalry uh, at the time with the 49ers. And it went into a little bit of a lull, but now it's back again to being this great rivalry. What is it about your two teams that make the game so competitive, so tough, so physical, and, and quite honestly, from the outside, so fun to watch? I mean, I think, you know, it's a divisional game. We understand that, you know, in our division, a lot of these games determine the outcome of your season. It determines the outcome of whether you win your division, um, whether you, whether or not you go to the playoffs. And so we always know that when we go against the 49ers or the Rams or the Cardinals, we already know it's going to be a very, very physical game. And that's just kind of like what it's always been. I don't really know where it started, when or how it started, but I do know one thing is that you gotta be able to put your helmet on and be able to embrace the physicality because there's no running away from it. And so every time we go out there, we already know what it is. They might not like us, we might not like them, whatever the case is, but we're gonna go out there and we're gonna just put it all on the line. Tyler Lockett, listen, thanks a lot for taking time to uh, to talk today and also, uh, congratulations on being recognized for some of the good things you do. Really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. You have a good rest of the day. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.